I just now started uh, putting it on record. I forgot to put it on there. On uh, the majority of our classes, on everything, it'll be about 90% record. The only ones that I won't be recording on will be the ones in the daytime. I got permission from the director and the committee to move my classes to Tuesday and Thursday. Uh, Caitlin, Robert, Diane, Debbie. So it, from on Tuesday at 10 to 12 p.m. and then on Tuesday 10 to 12 p.m. It has moved from it's no longer on Monday or Wednesday, so from now on, it'll be on Tuesday and Thursday in the in the early earlier part of the day. Okay. Okay. Now the hours stay, the hours are going to stay the same, right, Eagle? It's just changing days. So, okay. Just changing days. Okay. Sorry. We. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and go to the whiteboard. We're gonna go over these real quick. The first one is I want. I want it, her, or him. Okay, I don't know. When you're talking about something, you could say, like, I want it. Or you could say, uh, oh, pardon me, I hit something. I want it, or I want her, or I want him as Gombla. Gombla. Okay, Diane, we're going to go on here. It'll be a little bit uh, repetitive on it when you say it. <clears throat> it's Gombla. Con bla. Con bla. Good. Yeah, Robert and Caitlin, okay. I'm just seeing who's there. You went, Robert. Con bla. Con bla. Con bla. I want it. These are all verb conjugations in the first person singular, also known as the I form. Caitlin, Compla. Compla. Good. Deb. Combla. 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 Chris. Combla. 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 Robin. Combla. 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 
Come on, Flaw. How you doing, Barb? Hi, everybody. I'm doing good. Hello. How are you? Hi. What's that now? I didn't put this on it, but it's the same word. I ate or I eat. Blate. Blate. The second one is Wablate. 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 Diane, go ahead. Say both of them. The first one is Blate. Wablate. Blate, wablate. Good. Robert, blate, wablate. Blate, wablate. Caitlin, blate, wablate. Blate, wablate. Good. Caitlin, you said pretty good. Thank okay, you. Okay, Deb. You're welcome. Blate, wablate. Blate, wablate. Good. Chris, blate, wablate. Blate, wablate. Good. Robin, blate, wablate. Blate, wablate. Also, if you guys have an opportunity, even though that you got Google Classroom and you got time to write these down, write them down because we're going to have some exercises throwing in a few small vocabulary words of past tense or futuristic or to want more or want some or to do it again. Go ahead, uh, Barbara, sister. Blate, wa blate. Blate, wa blate. Good. Does anybody uh, feel like they got difficult saying these words on these first two that we went through? Because I'm going to go over them and make sure that everybody understands. Anyone? Chris and I are good. Okay, we're going to erase this right here. We're going to move on to I drank it or I'm drinking it or I drink it or I drank it. Excuse me. I drink or I drank it. Okay, and a lot of these verbs right here, when they come to this this type of classification, verb is a D slash or the old form known as TH verbs. Okay, now almost any TH verb can also take on this same form right here, adding this. I should have done that other one, but I want you guys to understand that don't get don't get tripped up on these words when you see blaton. Well, uh, teacher told us wa blaton meant drink. Wa blaton. I don't know what wa blaton means. I want you guys to fully understand the language, the Ponca language. Now, 
when you add that to it, that simply means that's an older way of talking in our culture that's still used uh, today, but more commonly is left off. In some cases, that is commonly left off, not in all, but some, uh, getting more, more than usual. Well, I don't know. I guess throughout time, you know, languages change. And, and this is one of them. So, Diane, Blaton, Wa Blaton. Now remember, I got that little plus sign because it's adding it. Don't think that means the pause it or nothing. I was just showing you, like I should have showed you on the first one, that that's something you're adding to Blaton, Wa Blaton. So, Diane, you got Blaton, Wa Blaton, Wa Blaton. Blaton, Wa Blaton. Yes. Robert. Blaton, Wa Blaton. Good. Caitlin, Blaton, Wa Blaton. Blaton, Wa Blaton. Good. Deb. Blatton, wa Good. Deb, what does wa blaton mean? I drank it. Yes. Chris, go ahead. Blaton, wa blaton. Good. Good pronunciation on that nozzle valve. Go ahead, Robin. Blaton, wa blaton. Go ahead. Barb. Blaton, wa blaton. Barb, tell them what blaton means. I drink or I drank it. Yes. Class on this one here, does everybody feel like it's acceptable how you heard it? Because almost all of you, I didn't hear not one of you. If you were talking to a fluent punker, they would have understood clearly what all of you are talking about. You guys feel comfortable with moving on? Did you skip Debbie? Yes. No. no. I went. Yeah. Debbie said it like a champ. <laughs> Those of my kids were eating supper. You're making me jealous. Yeah. I'm good. Okay. Okay, we're moving on. I had to get, have my daughter get my little daughter at her. She's trying to visit. We can't have that right now. Okay, so now we are going to, I think, I think, I thought. Son, go ahead. Go sit in there and watch TV. We'll do something later on. Right now, I need I need to focus. Okay, thank you. Watch TV in my room. I apologize. When I come home, you know, I, I do other work too, and then they get off school. You know, the kids they just want to be around me, like stuck to my hips. 
it's hard to understand. Sometimes I go other places, but this one right here is I think or I thought a blega, a blega, a blega, a blega. Remember, if you listen, if any of you say that first A, the E makes the e, A sound. If any of you say it kind of loud, that second A has to be said louder because of that that accent marker, that acute accent marker raises the vowel. So if you say A, blega, you have to say it louder. They cannot be equal. That first A sound of that E cannot be louder than the one with the accent marker that slash above it. It cannot be. I think or I thought. A blega. A blega. A blega. A blega. Diane. A blega. Okay, I want you guys to try to say it without that nozzle eye sound on it. A blega. A blega. I don't like that. I got to blow it up. I did that on accident. In this word, there's a nozzle at the end in the root form of it, but when you talk in conversational punk, a lot of times that nozzle sound gets knocked off. A blega. A ble. A. Let me do it like this. A Blay Ga A Blay Ga A Blay Ga A Blay Ga a blega. A blega. I feel like I might confuse you with too much of a nozzleized A on the end. In the root form, it is. A they go. But a lot of times when we're talking punk or that nozzleized A will get knocked down to just ga. A blega. All right, Diane. A blega. A blega. A blega. Robert, everybody give me at least two times on it. A blega. A blega. A blega. Good. Caitlin? A blega. A blega. Kaylin, has somebody taught you Ponka before? Um, a little bit. It shows to the to the Ponka ear. It shows. Thank you, Debbie. You're welcome. A blega. A blega. Yes. And I just want to let you know, I got to run downstairs for a minute, so I'm going to be okay. gone for a minute. Deb, you hit the nail on the head on the sound. Oh, we belong. Right on. Chris? A blega. A blega. Good. A blega. A blega. Good. Good. Wonderful. Barb? A blega. A blega. And I, and I have a quick, I have a quick question. Oh, hang on, real quick. Okay. Oh, Leah, turn that air conditioner off and bring me a cough drop. My throat's jacked up. It here, it is like ninety degrees, and then it goes down to thirty. Like everybody I know, sick. I was cool. I'm thinking I'm gonna make it. 
all of a sudden I come back from tossing, but I fall asleep and my throat's itching so bad I feel like I'm about to gag right now. <clears throat> and then I come home and my kids got the air conditioner on. I need a cough drop of that spray and I need this air conditioner on my, my throat's rasp. I feel like I'm about to gag. <clears throat> I need the AC turned off. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, bring me a, that spray to spray on my throat because I feel na nauseated from my throat. It's too itchy. Uh, okay, I apologize. Sister, go ahead with your question, Barbara. Um, with these verbs, when you say I ate or I eat, I drink or I drank, I think or I thought, you you don't have to add me, K, like it happened in the past? Okay, that's a good question, class. I want you guys to pay attention to what she's asking me. Okay, whenever we had me, K, at the end of any of these things right here, when we go back to our what we have gone through so far, so far we have done, I want, I ate, I drank, I think. So, hang on real quick, hang on class, I gotta spray myself real quick with this. I'm actually kind of scared to use this because back in 2020, this is the same one I had when I had COVID and I used it. You see it? <laughs> Wow. Ah, jeez. Thank you. That tea's not helping me. Go ahead and have it. It's, uh, it's sweet tea. Okay, back to the question of my sister Barbara asked. Um, she asked, do we have to have Mike? No, you don't, because automatically any of the verb conjugation, whether it's from the first person singular, second person singular, third person singular, or first person plural, or second person plural. Deb, we're talking about, Barbara asked a good question. She said, do we have to add me, K? Because every one of these are I statements. And then also the me, K is the past uh, participle or past perfect, whatever you want to call it. I've heard it said both ways, which is correct. I don't know because I'm not a scholar in the English language, but then so anyway, she had asked, we have to use it. So I'm telling you guys, and no matter if it's the second person plural or the third person plural, automatically them verbs are already in the present tense and the past tense automatically. Not the future tense automatically, but they are automatically in the present tense and the past tense automatically. Now, when you're gonna, now when we go back to, when we go back, I want, I wanted, but now when we go to past perfect, when you say comp blah meat k, comp blah meat k, I'm gonna put it on the board real quick. Hang on. Okay, everybody got this right. No, we're gonna use this one just because it was on here already. I don't like that. Leah, let let him, uh, turn it back inside. I hear him crying outside. And bring that, bring him back inside. He's been out there too long. Hold on, thunder to coming. He's in the front, but go out the back and get him. Stop being mean to him. Well, he's eight years old in dog years. He's crazy like an old man. He's ancient. Okay. Eblega Mike. Eblega Mike. Already, Eblega means I thought. But when you put Mike at the end of it, you, I had thought. I had thought. I had thought. Now, when you say I thought, automatically that's a past, that's just a past, uh, past tense, but it's not past future. Or, uh, excuse me, uh, past perfect, excuse me, or past participle. It's not that. It's only past tense. So when you, when you do it with me, K, right here, look, that is past participle, or, or some people call it past uh, perfect. 
tenants. Whatever you know it by, some you'll hear some say either way, past participle or past uh, perfect. So this right here changes it to I had thought. We're going to go back over these other ones that we did. Leave the high you go. I want everybody to understand. Did you get him? Well, he was coming out there. See, that's what happened. In our dog probably got stolen. He's a teacup chihuahua from Mexico. He's uh, eight years old and like maybe four months old, but you know, dog is. He's pretty damn old. Okay, so now we say, Complamike. I had wanted him. I had wanted it. Blate Mike. I had eaten. Blate Mike. I had eaten. Now, if you just say Blate, you just say, I ate, and automatically means that you already did. It's past tense. But Blate Mike. I had eaten. Blaton Mike. You got him? Oh, well, there's some there's another little dog crying out there. I'm sorry. Wrong dog. She's mad. That's my 13 year old. She's going on 21 at 13. It's hard to deal with. Okay. Uh, Deb, will you take a shot at this? Bottom, meet K. Bottom, Now translate it. I had drink. Changing. Yes. I That's had correct. drink. No. That's okay. right. Remember, guys, we don't make this hard. We make it simple. Now, without that meat on it, you would say what? Diane. Mm. Uh -huh. No, in English, if you say blaton, uh, what does it translate to? Uh, I drank or I drank it. I drank. You see, you guys are catching on pretty quick. So right there, that was a good question. And listen. Any of you on here, when you have questions like that, you have to ask it. So that way we have an understanding and from past lessons that we did. Because in the beginning, I took you guys to an uh, to an intermediate level that most of you were catching on and grasping it. And so now we come to the decision where we're going to slow it down. So that's what we do, what we're doing right now. And it gives us a better opportunity for do pronunciation. You know, our pronunciation in Ponca is everything. And there's a few of you that uh, naturally have that. And some of you are sound like you don't need to practice pronunciation, but don't ever feel that you don't need it because it's always good to practice it, to say it over and over. Okay, and so what we're doing here, I believe is really good because we have to work on our pronunciation. So we're gonna carry on. Now this right here is going to be our fifth one. We've already done four of them. And so now this one might just be a tad bit harder.
Drive careful. Okay, this right here in Ponca it says, Eat all God's don't blood. 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 Diane, honor us, please. Eagle, please. Eagle, can you like phonetically write that, please? Yes, good, good. Ah, whoa, Houston, we got a problem. I like that. Well, I feel on that. E da ga skon bale. E da ga skon bale. He log a scumble. He log a scumble. Thanks, Eagle. We're gonna go over this a couple times. It all got scumped there. Oh, whoa, whoa, that that don't belong there. I didn't even realize that that does not belong there. It all got scumped there. Excuse me. Barbara, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Barbara, these are called I forms. They're the first person singular, which is also called I form. Okay, in the punk dictionary, when it says ego scon, then that is third person singular. We're not oh, working okay. on that. It just didn't sound. It sounded different to me and. Now you now I know why. Thank you. Uh, I forgot to mention, Barb. You were you were kind of late coming just a little bit. 
Barb, can you go to Google Classroom real quick? We're going to take a pause so that Barb could get caught up so she knows where we're at. Yeah, I looked at it quick, and there's a bunch of new documents. Yeah, it'll be the first one that's by itself, or the only one by itself that says attachment. It says I statement dot JPG. I'm not seeing that one. I have Bear Clans, How to Count, and Colors is the latest one loaded. That is the Barbara, latest one. It's the one before that one. Right. It's the message before that one. It's a few days before that. I On statement. I see it. Thank you. Thank you. I got it. Thank you. I want to. I want to give you. A, I want to give you a chance to look at it just briefly, sister, so that you know where I don't want nobody behind. This class okay. is not to put no one behind, and and if somebody else comes on in the next few minutes or even thirty minutes, we're going to catch them up real quick. So it gives you guys all time to uh, get a better grasp on what we're talking about this evening. Okay. Thank you. And Barb on here, the first four that we did was Combla, Blate, Blaton, Eblega. And now this is the fifth one is Iragos Combla. And so we're right here on this. And we're, and also the question you asked to correlate with what we're doing is, and one, once we get everybody to pronounce Iragos Combla, then we're also going to do Iragos Combla, Meet K. We're going to ah. make it past participle. So that was something that you added on that I like. So it gave everybody a chance to open up on that. And then maybe down the road tomorrow when we go over these statements, we'll also, uh, Kevin, uh, tell us this to go in her room with them kids and you can watch TV tomorrow since I'm in the front room. And, and unless you're going somewhere. So, so, so back to where we're at. We're on I statements tonight. We're going to be on I statements tomorrow, but we're going to add a little bit to them. Like how tonight, how Barbara asked the question and we decided to add Mike. Tomorrow, we will also add Tamike. And, but I'm just going to give you a heads up. Tamike is a future, I will, future. Future perfect. <clears throat> Tense. But right now we're going to stay with past perfect tense or past participle tense. Okay, now, Diane, back to this. I need it twice from everybody if possible. I need it twice from everybody if possible. Good enough. Just have to slow it down a little bit so you can get it good. Robert. Good. Caitlin. Debbie. Ita Gascombele. Ita Gascombele. Good. Chris. Ita Gascombele. Ita Gascombele. Robin. Ita Gascombele. Ita Gascombele. Good. Mr. Barb. Good. You guys all done really good. Uh, Rob, Rob, go ahead and uh, translate that. Yeah, so it means uh, I had tried it or I had tasted yeah, it. That's correct. Eagle? Yes. Question. 
Go ahead. Since it's I tried slash I tasted, um, I'm assuming that it means tried more in that you tried food as opposed to I tried to do push ups or I tried to do, um, I tried to run, you know. Does that make sense? No, it's not. Uh, actually, when uh, in modern Ponca, when they say, you know, or Walatake, Walatake, I tried, I tasted the food. But now, when you do this, also don't. Uh, let me make it clear. Hold on. It also means I attempted. I attempted. I tried. Or I tasted. But Barb, can you do me a favor? Can you go to? Uh, can you go to Wagonde's book and look up Tasted? Tasted is, uh, sometimes you'll see it, Das Dube or Das Nibe. Das Dube yeah. or Das Nibe. And that literally means to taste something or lick it. Yeah, he has Igas Conde or Das Dube. He has both for taste. Yes, but in the Ponca Dictionary, it doesn't show that for taste, but even though like I said, you guys got to remember something. Uncle Mark Swetland, when he made that book that uh, what we call what we called him Wagonze. Okay, listen. He worked on that book for f over 15 years. Let's see, hold on. Bob, what's the exact date on that? At least 15 years, wasn't it? When he very first started it? At least 15 years. More like 20, I think. But what I'm, the point where I'm trying to take to make to you classes, my grandpa, Lewis Hedman, only had two years to complete this book. That book that she's looking at, they did that for years because he had funding and he had resources that my grandfather did not have. Yeah, he kept and getting so the grants point, renewed. And so the point, what I'm, I'm trying to make it, my grandpa didn't make that grant. The tribe made it and they just said, hey, we want you to do this dictionary. Here you go. So you see what I'm saying? And so the point, what I am trying to say is, what, what did he have in her sister, Igoskonle? Uh, and did he also say Dostube or Dostnibe? Dostube. Okay, Dostube. Okay, and Dostnibe. Look that up in the Omaha to English. Dostnibe. He has das Dube, lick or taste, das be. I don't see das Dube. Das no, what has he got right now? Das Dube. To... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, babe. Okay, so he has das Dube for lick too, right? Or taste, I mean? Yes. Okay, look up lick. Up. Lick. Is it Das Nibe? The reason, the reason we're looking up these words that correlate with one another is because they also use them to lick and taste sometimes. They, sometimes they won't differentiate them, but there is a difference, though. Lick Das Dube. On the English side, it's Das Dube. On the Omaha side, it's Das Dube. It's the same. It's the same. Can you go to your Ponca dictionary and look up the uh, Das Nibe? Das Nibe? Ego? Yeah. I looked, I looked up, um, while she was doing that, I looked up Lick in the um, Ponca dictionary, and Lick is Das Nibe. Okay, so she got it. Okay. Uh, Robin, you and Barb, could you also look up that word, uh, Das Dube in the Ponca Dictionary? And sometimes when we get on these things, uh, 
class, it is really important that we look at the words that are close to it because they could also be used as the same meaning in, uh, in English. But in Ponca, there is a definite distinction. But when you conjugate these words, or you uh, not just conjugate them, but, or if you uh, translate them into English, you know, a lot of words are used as the same thing. But in our Ponca language, it's different. Even though when you taste something, of course you lick it or you put put get put on your tongue. And then um in the Ponca dictionary, he just has that snebe for lick. But do, can you find that word in the Ponca side that says da stube? No, that was it the says, question. It says no. da snebe da snude. It goes from da snebe to da snude to cough. Up to daspe to das daki das du das shude. I don't know why. Yeah, it's not in it's not in um Lewis's dictionary. But either way it's understood, you know. I'm a I'm a Ponka speaker and it's understood. Yep. Like I told you, it has to go back to the same thing what I told you when they got fifteen to twenty years versus two years. And actually, he didn't have a full two years. It was like he had like uh, 20, 21 and a half months or almost 22 months to complete the, the punk conditioner. And I think he'd done a fabulous job, but it's just that he did not have enough time. Not making no excuse up for him. He could hold his own. That's it's amazing he did what he did in the amount of time he did it. But uh, one time I tried <laughs> one time. I, I tried to do something for it, boy. He, he let me know, grandson, I can speak for myself. I got this. <laughs> After that, I never tried to try it again. I thought I was being a good grandson, but no. Grandpa knows he got his own. He can do it. Okay, look, those of you that were looking in uh, the Ponca Dictionary, it also says, Nasni is to devour something, nothing left. I know I've seen Dostube in here somewhere. You, listen, because uh, Dost. Uh, hold on. I'll get my cook. What? Uh, Anyway, in Ponca, it's still understood as to, to taste something or uh, have reference to even licking it. No, no, wait, no, no, it don't. Where is it? My God, where is it? It might. Uh, he actually had it, and he's got it somewhere in here. We just got to find it. Okay, listen, in the punk, on the punk, the English of the punk side, it's in here. I've seen it. But he actually had it listed as something. Uh, We're just going to have to look, because remember, that thaw is a verb prefix to have to do with the mouth. The mouth, whether you're eating, tasting, spitting, swallowing, biting, or speaking, except for the word E-A. Uh, okay, I'm just going to have to think about it. I'll, I'll, find, I'll try to make it a goal to find it tonight. Uh, I'm frustrated. I hate it when I can't find something. It's okay. It's okay. So anyway, to lick is Zosnibe, and also, to, and you could also use it. Oh, Connie, I mean, uh, Barb, what did you find to taste under beside Egoscontle? Was that the only one? What? Uh, you gotta ask your big brother. To taste Yes. 
It was thus, Dubé. I'm in class. I'm in class. I'll send it to you here in a minute. We'll leave that back open and have If you look up the English, it is Egas Gonte, but there's not anything else. In the Omaha dictionary, it's Egas Gonte or the Stube. Yeah. I understand all three of them as being to lick or taste anyway. And But there's also another translation that. Was a tad bit different that I saw someone. I gotta find it. I gotta find it. But is it listen, class? Is it? It's in. It's in the English to. It's in the English to uh, Ponco. So, you guys get a chance to look at it as well. Anything to do with the bite, to speak, to eat, to swallow, to spit, uh, spit or. Talk or talk about talk down on somebody. Anyway, it it's in there. I've seen it in there, but it. Whoa, peanut, get off my shoes. We got like a seven-week-old pit bull female puppy, and she's like tearing up the shoe, killing it. The shoe ain't got a chance, Ivy. We have a total in our family. We got uh, one chihuahua and three pit bulls and a goat. And we got a horse that's coming down from South Dakota. But that horse is what they call uh, when a girl becomes a woman. There's an old custom amongst the Ponca. That was last done with the Northern Ponca, what they call the Northern Ponca, the Ponca of Nebraska today, that they give that horse away that we're going to put a, a beat it bridle on it and put some uh, Pendleton blankets to the Native American. That's the best blanket could be given. Pendleton, you might look it up if y'all don't know what that is. Some people call them saddle blankets, but to the Native American, that is like the most highest favored blanket there is. And, uh, I don't know about up up that way. If you guys think star quotes are better, but down here they don't look they don't look at it as a star quote as good as a Pendleton. But that's what we're gonna do because my daughter she had her uh, period a couple months ago, her first period. So therefore, she had become uh, becoming of a woman. I know that might sound like a bit much to say, but. But we're going to bring that ceremony back down here. And when I do, I'm going to invite you guys, even though you, some might not come, but I'm still going to make the offer to invite you to that. And we're going to feed the people like we did last night. We fed a few hundred people last night. We ran out of bowls, had enough plates. We just barely made it with two massive tubs of uh, hominy and pork and then corn soup with beef. These are just Indian delic Native American delicacies of the soup from down this way. I don't know if you guys still eat them up that way, but we do here. And usually we have what they call steam fry. And uh, steam fry is what is just like a Juanide. Juanide, Ega. It's like gravy, but it's not. And so anyway, we had a good turnout last night, and we had our Omaha relatives, and when I went to camp, you know, uh, there was part about, we was at my Aunt Casey Camp's uh, Hornick, uh, her camp, my Grandma Julian gave McDonald Farmer's uh, camp, and uh, my uncle was talking Omaha to me, and a lot of the people got quiet because they hear us talking in what we call Indian, you know, old way, we didn't say talking Omaha or talking punk or talking Deggy Hall. We called it talking Indian. And, you know, we uh, did our courtesies and talk, small talk. He asked me in, uh, in, our, in our native language how, how I'm doing my body. And I told him, I said, you know, he said, 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 he asked me how my body was. I said, I said, you could, we thought they eat take I said, hey, they go. Uh, but I'm but I'm healing. 
And, you know, and I said my common courtesy, we small talked a little bit more than I told him. I said, Sean, we're talking about Tomika. Because I had to go finish getting the rest of the stuff ready because I had to get the lodge ready. And my sons cut grass. My oldest son, Kevin, cut most of them at the Sundance grounds, and we had to get it ready. And so we had a good day yesterday, and then we didn't get out of sweat till real late. And um, it was really good. You know, we sang a lot of songs. And then I told my uncle in Ponca, I told him to sing that Four Directions song. And and uh, he understood me because, you know, in Ponca, I told him, I said, uh, Today, do, but I'm a one. I said, Nigga, who I got? I told my uncle, I said, Sing that Four Directions song. I didn't say Umaha or, or Ponka or Sean, Nyashigama. I didn't say no language or nothing, but he understood. And uh, he sang it, and I sang it with him the best I could because I heard it before on uh, YouTube. And I understand the words to it, the majority of them. There was one couple words I understand because they don't sound they don't sound right to me. And I didn't ask him because we didn't have time when you're in them type of ceremonies. You don't say, "Hey, well, what does this word mean?" But he sung it beautifully, and you felt the Holy Spirit in there. You felt the presence of Wakanda being a, amongst us, and hearing people praying in Ponca and Omaha, and people praying in Dakota because we had Yankton Sioux and we had Santee Sioux that were there with us. And then we also had uh, one Cree woman with us, and uh, part Otos, but they're Ponca, they're, they're Ponca, but they're part Oto too. But but we had a lot of good people there, and you know, it's really good. And we had a full moon last night, seeing it come up right there behind our Sundance tree, you know, what we call Jean Wakube. And that arbor, that Sundance arbor, you call it Sade Glyph, Wahube. And it just felt really powerful last night that, you know, one of these days, you know, I hope that you guys could come down here. You know, uh, Deb, you've probably been to a sweat lodge. I don't know, maybe you have. I don't know who, what you guys have been to, or Caitlin, or Robert, or Diane, or Chris, or Robin, but. It'd be good that you guys could come down here, and then we're going to have our second annual Sundance after 100 and 113 years or so. And the Ponca have brought it back amongst us down here. You know, up there in the north, it qu they quit dancing it when they came back. They didn't dance it up to the last time the, what they call Osni Ponca or Ponca of Nebraska, the last time they danced is when we were all one. So this year we're going off our visions and we're also going off my uncle Pierre Merrick he's a Umaha he had a vision that Zegiha would be united in the Mi'idambe Wachi that we would all come back together and we're going to try to make that vision come true that he had 30 some years ago he was a Sundance chief he's, you know he's not doing it no more he's old they got younger men that he passed it down to but uh, at the Sundance, why I started that was amongst the Omaha. And so now we're dancing on our own back home, but they support us in what we're doing. The only different thing that we do is we don't use uh, Dakota, Lakota songs. We use Ponca. Not talking bad on nobody, but we're not doing that. We're only using our... <laughs> Ooh, my throat's raspy. <laughs> So we're trying our best that way. And you guys are all welcome to that on uh, May 22nd. It'll start. Let me look on my calendar real quick while we're talking. We're going to take a break after I look on this calendar date for y'all. Okay, on June 28th, June 22nd, we're going to start. That's our tree day. But don't get me wrong. We're going to be starting our preparations probably on... Uh, uh, around the 15th and 16th we'll be doing it and we won't finish our Sundance until the 26th and then the 27th, 28th, 29th and 30th will be our final days of our post uh, Sundance where we'll be healing and keeping to ourselves for four days where we're not you know in the way or, or uh, out there like that way because we'd be powerful at that time 
when you got open wounds to your body like that, you're susceptible to uh, spiritual entities or, or even being powerful might hurt somebody what you say or think. So we'll be resting on them days. And then on June 30th, I'll be leaving for New Blala, New Blala, New Briar, Nebraska. And I hope I can see some of y'all up there because they're going to be doing that on July 1st. We're going to be going to our old Ponca sites, uh, Gray Blanket, Wayne Hude, or uh, what time is it? Well, my son's still here. Why ain't he at work? And then uh, Hublon, Fish Mountain Village, or Nompe, Nompe Wale, Scary Village, and then other historical sites. I believe 11 or 13 total. And we're going to go on it. And us Ponca down here, that's something that's going to be emotional for us because we don't know that way. We retain the language in our cultural ways and our dances and stuff, but all we know are how to say that and what stories we've been told about up that way. And the Yellow Cliffs, you know, we don't know a thing about that other than what we're told. But for us to go back there and see where our ancestors are, it's going to be an emotional time for us to be able to see that. I want to pause for 10 minutes. We're going to, it's 7 12. I kind of went over a little bit. When I come back, I'm going to sing a couple of songs and then we're going to get back into this, okay? Okay, sounds good. Y'all take a break, eat something. Thank you. Caitlin, if you'll share your email with me, I'll try and get you a link for the Google Classroom. Or if you yeah. want to friend me on Facebook, um, I'm Robin Neville. I can share it that way, whichever you're more comfortable with. Oh, no. Cancel. Exactly. No, 